Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank all the, the Penn State fans that came out and supported us on the road. That was great. I want to thank you guys for coming out and supporting us as, as well. You guys are always here. Mark Brennan gets here before he, we do, is waiting for us at the, at the uh, hotel each week. Um, you know, really proud of our guys. You know, went on the road, um, won in a tough place to play, uh, a, a place that's tough to win on the road. Um, you look over the last three, four years, the number of people that they've upset at home, night game in this place, the place was rocking. Um, so really proud of our guys. I thought the first quarter on offense, we, we looked like a young team. We, you know, we were um, you know, making mistakes that we hadn't normally made. Um, but then we, we, we calmed down after that point. And I was just proud of how our players and coaches managed the game. Uh, we didn't turn the ball over, protected the football. Um, we, we scratched and clawed for just enough points, whether that's touchdown or whether that was field goals. Um, we, were, we were punting. Uh, we, you know, we understood in that type of game, field position game, it's okay to punt. And then Blake did a great job of pinning them deep, pinned them deep a bunch of times, which was huge. Uh, defense has been playing great all year long. We were able to lean on them tonight. Uh, that was that was big time for us. Uh, you know, we won the field position battle you know, pretty dramatically, our own 34 to their 18. Turnover battle, which we knew was going to be big, 2-0. Uh, you know, the thing that was really interesting is one of the least penalized teams in the country. And we come in here tonight and uh, didn't necessarily play out that way. I'll leave it at that. Um, five yards to 80 yards. Um, you know, Noah Kane obviously played really well. Audrey, I know you're going to want to talk about that. Um, you know, obviously he played extremely well. Uh, great to see Brisker, you know, come in and get a, his first career interception. Uh, six straight win here, uh, which again, you know, tough, tough team. Um, you know, the, to play the way we played against, you know, and then obviously we're playing pretty good um, against the Big 12 West. So uh, excited about it, very appreciative for it. Uh, we're one and zero this week. We'll enjoy this for a couple hours. We won't get back until late, late, late. Um, but then we'll move on. You know, we'll move on to our next opponent. We will get a few hours to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to getting on the plane. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Soul Plane. It'll be like we'll be we'll be partying like soul plane the whole way back to State College. Um, then hit the ground and, and get back to work. So open up the questions. James, can you can you describe that series in the third quarter where your players appeared to cross the goal line three times, and did you get an explanation from John O'Neill on the reversal of Pat's apparent touchdown? No. Can you describe what that, that whole scenario was? Have you ever been through such a scenario in your years of coaching? I, I, That's I, a yes or no. That's I know. Not. I know. I, I, I'd love to do it. Trust me. Trust me. I'd love to have a lengthy conversation about this. I know our fans want me to have a lengthy conversation about it. Um, it's not gonna. It's not going to do any good. I'm going to enjoy the win. I'm going to focus on the things that we can control. Um, but I, and I know. I get it. I get it. But it, I'm in a no-win situation here. Oh, James, in the fourth quarter, there, you bring Noah out to, to run the clock out. Just more, a little bit more about his game, what that meant for him to go out there and do that, and also how well your offensive line played in the four above well, two and a half minute offense. Yeah, to, to end the ball on our terms like that, four minute offense, um, we haven't really been able to do that. You know, really under the old offensive system, under the new offensive system, um, even years we won the Big Ten Championship, we weren't really able to do that against a good team on the road, one of the best defenses in the country. Um, you know, really proud. You know, really proud. Um, I do think Noah is a downhill guy. Um, you know, very little indecision. He sticks his foot in the ground. He gets downhill. He's always falling forward. We went into this knowing he was going to be our four-minute back. You know, continues to do great things. Um, I'm just, I'm really proud of them. I'm, I'm proud of our old line. You know, that, you know, we didn't play perfect, but we're getting better. You know, we are getting better. They really are. They're fighting, they're scratching, they're clawing. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of them. And I, and I would also say this, you know, we spent a lot of time in the off season 
I felt like that our run game was not sophisticated enough. We were pretty much an inside zone and a power read team, and that was really it. So I, I, I like that we got we got more things for people to deal with. It helps in two minute situation. You know, we're running the counter play where we got the guard pulling, and now the tight end, you know, you know, following him and, and inserting. Uh, we just we just we had, we got. You know, we got more diversity in our running game, which I think helps us, especially in four-minute offense. So I think that's that's helped us become a little bit more balanced and a little bit more problematic to try to defend. James, are you go going into these games thinking you're going to kind of save Noah, for lack of a better term, for the fourth quarter, or is it just playing out that way? No, it was it was a um, it was a one-to-one -one rotation this week with all those guys. I think we only had four possessions in the first half. You know, it was kind of how the game the game really went. Uh, James, um, Sean didn't have his best game, but he kept took care of the ball, no interceptions, no fumbles. Uh, how important was that that you know he kept his poise enough where he didn't? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, you know, we we, and, and I'll say this too to, to in, in Sean's defense, we dropped some balls tonight too. You know, we dropped some balls. I thought he was a little antsy with his feet in the pocket early on. Um, that same you know footwork, um, I think made us made us miss some throws that we normally have been making. Um, but again, most importantly, like you mentioned, we didn't turn the ball over. Uh, we reserved our right to punt and play great defense. And um, you know, we did just enough to win. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of, I just talked about the guys in the locker room. There's guys you know, that probably felt like they didn't play great tonight, but we, we played good enough to win. And we should always feel like that. We should always feel like there's areas and things that we can get better on. Uh, it's our job as coaches to put those guys in those types of position in practice, those areas maybe of weakness and challenge them. Um, I write notes down throughout the entire you know, game of things that we need to do next week um, to work on some areas. Um, so, you know, I, I'm really proud of Sean. He's a gutsy competitor. He makes plays with his feet. I thought that third and ten play was big. The only thing, the only criticism I would say is I, I don't know if I would slide there because when you decide to slide, it's up for interpretation where they're going to mark it. So you, we need to sell out on that one. But we got the first down, which is the most important thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm proud of him. You know, he's he's managing the game well. He's preparing like crazy. He's competing like crazy. The locker room believes in him. The coaches believe in him. Um, I thought the one time where he kind of broke out of the pocket and it was a little bit indecisive on whether he was going to throw it or run and the guy almost came behind him and stripped him. we got to make sure we got two hands on the ball. But overall, you know, again, I'm nitpicking because well, he's, playing, he's playing really well. He's 6-0. Oh. I sat around the hotel this afternoon and watched, watched a lot of teams, you know, that, that didn't get a dub today. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to embrace the 1-0. and oh. We're going to embrace the fact that we're 6-0. And uh, keep keep moving this thing forward, James. What's it like for you at the the end of the game? You, know, you seemed pretty psyched up to be able to run up and down the the sideline. You know, high fiving Penn State fans that that made a long trip. And how much does winning on the road against a ranked team build up the confidence? You know, to help you go one and zero again next week. Yeah, the win we're one and zero. It's really not a whole lot more than that. Uh, we we literally we didn't talk about that in the locker room with the players. We don't talk about that with coaches. We didn't talk about it all week, not once. Um, it's just watching the film and, and breaking them down. And what do we have to do to find a way to win against this opponent, whether they're ranked or not, whether it's home or away, whatever it may be. Um, and I'm and I'm pleased with that. Um, obviously, you know, for me, I want to make sure that the fans know how much we appreciate them. Um, I know next week there'll be a hundred and twelve thousand in the stadium. I don't know if that's possible, um, but but I also appreciate the fans that travel with us on the road because it helps. And and to me, that's probably the next step for us is when we can really, really travel and, and take over other people's stadiums. Um, as you guys know, I study a lot of things that are going all, all around the country in our, in our profession, in our business, and in our game. Um, and I see that. I was on the other end of that you know, in the past as well. Um, so the fans that we get to travel with us are phenomenal, but we want that to grow. I want, I want Penn State to have an unbelievable national reputation for how we travel all over the country, wherever we play, and, and not just bowl games, uh, you know, regular in-season games. Time for two more. When you look back on this week, 
Was this week any different at all in the way it played out with Tuesday and Wednesday and then having to go on the road to come here? I'm sure. I'm not sure I'm following. Well, I mean, Tuesday, obviously, the thing with Jonathan Sutherland and the new players. And then Wednesday, the TV show that you guys, I assume, watched together. Did this week play out any differently gotcha. than you had? Yeah, we didn't watch it together. Um, I'm actually, I was actually hoping a bunch of the guys didn't have HBO. Um, um, but, yeah, we didn't, we didn't watch it together. We didn't really talk about it. I did say on Wednesday, watch the show, enjoy it, and then let's move on. Um, it can't affect us. Um, you know, obviously Tuesday, you know, was Tuesday, but we've already kind of addressed that and, and moved forward. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, obviously – you know, in major college football and being at a place like Penn State and, you know, the, the type of microscope that, that, that is on us, there's always going to be something each week. Thank you. There's always going to be something each week. Um, but I, I'm pleased. I, I think although we got a young team, you know, one of the younger teams, I think, in college football, um, we have a very mature approach. They, they've, been, they've been great. How we practice, how we meet how they interact with the coaches, how the coaches interact with them. Um, it's really good. It really is. I've been doing this 24 years. I know a lot of people say this. I've been doing this 24 years. Pretty good. You know, I've been around some good teams. I've been around some good programs. Um, I've had some pretty good years. It's it's good. It really is. The locker room is good. They're so supportive of one another. They care so much about each other. Um, it's, it's it's good. We got we got to keep it going. You know, we got to keep it going. We got to keep building. We got to keep loving these guys and find a way to enjoy this tonight and then start over tomorrow. One of the things I mentioned to the guys in the locker room is that everybody's got to look at it and think about on the plane on the ride the ride home. What can we do this week to get better with our process? You know, our process isn't going to change, but we should be refining it. And that's a player saying, "I'm going to get 15 more minutes sleep this week than I got last week." Um, it's little things like that, 15 minutes more film, whatever it may be. Um, and it's not, and I have to watch because my answer is always more is better, and that's not always the right answer. Um, it, it, it's going to sleep, you know. Um, so it's, it's, we just, we just got to keep refining the thing, and we can't be satisfied, and we can't become complacent, which I don't think we will. Um, and next week, we need that stadium and that town rocking like it's never rocked before. I'm talking about like vibrating. I'm talking about what, what's it called when there's a uh, when there's a uh, earthquake? What, what's it? No, they they, they seismic. Tremor. Tremor. <laughs> seismic is a good seismic. word. I'm talking about it being a seismic event for the entire weekend. I'm talking about the restaurants, the bars, the hotels, the everything. The place needs to be rocking like it's never rocked before, and we need to keep that going. James, last Saturday you said your defense was playing at a championship level. Does that further reinforce that sentiment, what you saw on the field for six minutes tonight? And did you see anything new from this defense in game number six? Yeah, I don't know if I would say that in terms of new. But, yeah, we're playing really good. You know, we really are. We're playing really good on defense. Um, you know, we were able to make people one-dimensional um, in terms of stop the run. You know, we're able to get sacks and pressure on the quarterback pretty consistently. Um, and then you get into a situation where people have to take shots and they're 50-50 balls and they're either going to make a great catch or we're going to make a great play. Or sometimes there's a night where the other answer is an interference call. 